Listening, Part Three, Multiple Choice. It started with road rage in the nineties. Then we had air rage, and now it's trolley rage, surf rage, movie rage, and even dot com rage. Anger, it seems, is all the rage these days. But why? Well, with us is James Frith, head of road safety at the British Automobile Club. James, what makes people so aggressive on the roads? Well, it's all about control, really.、Uh, once people get in their car, they feel a false, a dangerous sense of security and control. They're in their own little world, their own safe environment, where they can deceive themselves into thinking they're better drivers than they really are. But this, of course, contrasts with events that happen outside the car, events over which they have absolutely no control whatsoever. And when they lose control, they lose their temper, right? That's right. For instance, most people set deadlines for their road journeys, and if someone threatens to prevent them from meeting that deadline, from not getting where they want to when they want to, they blow a fuse, and that's when we get road rage, or in many cases now. Revenge rage. Another rage. What's revenge rage, James? Well, it's similar to road rage, but less active. People get worked up inside, but just think nasty thoughts about other road users without actually doing anything. They imagine, for example, going after someone who's cut them up and forcing them off the road. The problem is, they get so caught up in their angry dreams of revenge that they fail to concentrate on the essential task of driving. Driving safely, and there's more of a risk of them causing an accident themselves than there is for the driver who has offended them. And who are these angry people? These so-called road and revenge ragers. We carried out a study recently, and we found it was mainly 18 to 25-year-old men who committed acts of road rage. And these people often had criminal records, histories of violence or drug or alcohol problems. In the case of revenge rages, people who merely fantasise about violent acts, they are more evenly spread across the age groups and between the sexes. The majority, though, are low mileage motorists; those who only average between thirty and sixty miles a week. And the people who are most likely to trigger revenge rage, the ones who cause these people to lose their temper, are inexperienced youngsters who drive quickly, elderly drivers, and drivers of big articulated lorries or vans. Makes you wonder why people don't just get the bus. Surely that's a calmer, more comfortable way to travel. Or is there bus rage too? Not exactly. But people do get fed up, don't they? When the bus just crawls its way along the route because the driver's busy taking people's money, giving them change, or answering questions, and other road users don't respect the bus lanes, so you can end up in the same congestion, the same anger-inducing situations that you tried to avoid by leaving the car at home. So, what is the solution? How can drivers keep their calm on the roads? I'm not sure there are any easy answers. But in one experiment, Dr. David Lewis, the man who coined the term "road rage," gave 25 stressed-out city drivers a kit containing real grass and a spray of grass scent. He told them to park their cars, take off their shoes and socks, and enjoy the sensation of grass beneath their bare feet. The point being. Well, changes in their heart rate and blood pressure were measured, and they were clearly more relaxed with the smell and sensation of grass around them. Now, you'd expect a higher proportion of calm drivers on country roads because there is considerably less traffic, but it's the combination of silence in the car, the smell of our immediate environment, and what we can feel that can really help calm us down and have a positive influence on our driving habits. So, can we expect grass kits to be on the market soon? Possibly. I'm sure the research will be put to some use. What we do have already, though, is a kind of backseat computer. Engineers have developed a high-tech car which criticizes drivers when they are behaving rashly or have poor control of the car.
A message comes up on the control panel. It also praises them for good road manners when they are driving considerately. If the driving becomes too erratic, the car stops. Sounds like a good idea. As long as drivers don't rely on it. We're always interested in technology that helps drivers control, but not technology that takes it away from them. Certainly, though, we've all been in that situation with someone in the passenger seat telling us to calm down. It can be annoying, but very effective. And if this works in much the same way, then fine. Though I can see stressed out drivers becoming even more irate when their car suddenly stops. Yes, indeed. Now, James, some of our listeners have written in with their own suggestions as to how we can maintain our composure in the car. Alan Hammonds writes in from Tooting, telling us how he uses spoken word tapes.